Today we have a panel for building effective partnerships between contracting officers and small business professionals. The moderator for this panel is Ms. Sherry Freeman. She is a Defense Acquisition University Learning Director and Professional for Small Business. Please welcome our panel. Week. Let's try again. Good afternoon, everybody. Woohoo! Thank you. Well, welcome to your last general session of the day. And most of y'all who know me know I don't need a microphone, do I? <laughs> but they told me to use it, so I'll use the microphone. So, what are we doing this afternoon? Well, what we're going to do is a little different than the other general sessions that we've had with panels in that the other panels basically sat and shared with you information and you were provided an opportunity to ask them questions in the subject matter of which the panel was about. What's going to be different about this panel is we're not going to be looking for you to ask the panel questions but for you to join the panel in sharing information. Because our topic is, what are those things we can do to forge better working relationships between our contracting professionals and our small business professionals? Now, I know I'm not the only one in the room who have heard comments like, Oh, Lord, hear that small business person come again. <laughs> All I need is for them to sign my 25 cent in line and get out my hair. That's all I want. <laughs> and the small business professional is saying, here they come again with this 25 cent in line that ain't got nothing supported with no market research. <laughs> what do you want me to do with this? Does that sound like collaborative working to you? Am I the only one in the room who has had some of that kind of experience? <laughs> Show of hands that you can, you can not sympathize, but you can empathize with me. <laughs> OK? <laughs> Empathy means you've been there. You got them potato chips and them t-shirts, too. <laughs> I ain't the only one who got them. But somewhere along the way, I did learn that there's a better way for us to do what we need to do working collaboratively. And you know what else I figured out? I'm not the only one who figured out how to make that happen. A number of you out there have already figured out how to make that happen. And by golly, I was fortunate enough to run into some of you in my capacity as an instructor for the small business curriculum through DAU. And some of the folks that I ran into who was able to articulate to me some of the positive experiences they've had and some of the positive things they've been doing are here in your panel today. So let me introduce these folks to you. To my very far right, the first gentleman here is Mr. Reggie Solomon. He is a contracting officer with Washington Headquarters Services. Now, for those who don't know, Washington Headquarters Services is an other defense agency. Wow. There are other agencies other than the Army, Air Force, <laughs> Navy? <laughs> yeah. There's a bunch of them ODAs out there, and he represents one of those. <laughs> Next to Reggie, we have Ian Aaron. He is a small business professional with the National Geospatial Agency. Huh, another one of those ODAs. <laughs> Next to him, we have Chris Natubik, who is a contract specialist and small business professional. Hmm. <laughs> <laughs> Thank <laughs> you. 
And Chris is with the Defense Intelligence Agency. Next to him, we have Elizabeth Harrington. Elizabeth is a small business professional with Washington Headquarters Services. And last but not least, we have Ms. Ramona Kelly, who is a contracting officer with the Army Contracting Command, Aberdeen Proving Ground. Let's give them a hand for being willing to share with you today. So to help you out and to help them out, we decided we'd come up with some questions um, that might be beneficial to helping you better understand the things that they're doing and that impact and have influence on how to build those better effective working relationships between the small business professionals and the contracting professionals. And one thing that I forgot to mention though about Ian is not only is he a small business professional, he's also a real program manager. So that was a double treat for me. It was like, oh my goodness, I got a two in one here. Okay, so what I wanna do is um, we're gonna make this a little more cozy. I'm gonna come over here and sit down. <laughs> And we're going to really have some conversation today. So not in any particular order. You guys decide if you want to chime in. And then if you don't, you know what Sherry does, right? <laughs> <laughs> OK. So the first thing I want to know, though, and I will address this to my contracting officers that are represented, what would you say is your role in small business as a contracting officer? What do you think about that, Chris? You want to start with me? I want to start with you. <laughs> well, my role as a small business specialist, the contracting days are over. Um, the stress levels are far different. <laughs> um, but believe it or not, the contracting staff is extremely inundated. I'm sure that's across the board. Um, there, there's far more requirements than there is people to work them. Um, and a lot of times, believe it or not, the government doesn't always plan very well. So by the time they actually receive those requirements, uh, they were needed yesterday. So when do they actually engage with small business? Sometimes it's not always in an efficient time frame. OK. Reggie, what do you see your role as a contracting officer in small business? I think the biggest thing that we need to take away or just look at is we have to enable the advocacy of all those we serve. So one is not only the small business office, but the customer the, and or program office. Also the people that we work with. It's an ever evolving learning situation. So my role as a contracting officer is to ensure that everyone knows what they need to know to help everyone's interest. Okay, that's not bad. So, small business professionals, what do you see your role in the acquisition and contracting process? Let's start with you, Elizabeth. I like to see myself as any other job series because we all play our roles. So I like to see myself as an advisor. I see I'm no different than legal. As a member of the acquisition team, I see myself as no different as finance. So it's because we all play a special part in this acquisition process. That's how I see myself as an integral member I just wish everybody else would see it that way sometimes. Mm. <laughs> I feel your pain. <laughs> okay, very good. So, Ramona, how do you think, based on what Elizabeth just said about everybody working together, how can promoting, fostering the idea of team to help bring everybody to the table and strive for a win-win situation. You want to forget about that pig? Sure. Okay. So how do you, what do you see going on that can take place to help foster well, that team idea? First, I want to ask everybody to say four words with me. When I say 
participation, I want you to say early and frequent. <laughs> participation. Early and frequent. So when we utilize those four words, we think about IPTs. We think about fostering a team environment where, all, where we all get together and make sure that we can lessen ambiguities and requirements, make them very clear that we can have very well-written requirements in the end. And we can also, again, form those IPTs by involving all of our stakeholders, such as the contract specialists, the um, contracting officers, the requiring activities, um, PM shops, budget, and as well the legal people who are, we know, our great advisors. So um, it's helpful for those us to be the players on the team. And if we utilize all of those things as being coming together and getting the requirement accomplished, we can do it and form a win-win situation by doing what? After we have participation, we have early <laughs> and frequent. <laughs> So we want to participate early and frequent in the process, and that'll help us have a win-win situation. OK. I'll, I'll, I'll chime in, too. Go ahead. Um, it, it's not rocket science. Mm -hmm. um, that's for the MDA folks. Mm. Um, <laughs> 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 you got to build the relationships. Um, so in order to do that, it's, it's simple. Um, speaking elementary mm -hmm. wise, it's, you have to have those conversations. Um, you have to play on the human factor. Have that emotional intelligence. Um, be sensitized to the contracting folks and what their issues um, and concerns are. Um, relate with them, level with them. I think people are more amenable to um, having those uh, working relationships and, and working better together um, if you're on a personal level with them. Not necessarily saying you have to be best friends or buddy buddy with everybody who has the time. Um, but it, I think just getting to that level playing ground finding that common ground, um, it just, it's a better situation all around. Okay. One thing that I like to do as well is, I like to tell everyone that I support, I'm not trying to do your job, so don't do my job. However, if there's something on your plate that is burdensome that you know small business professional can actually step in and help, I don't mind helping. So that's doing capability interviews for 8A, that's helping with market research report write-ups. So I use those little tidbits to kind of lure people in when they see the value that I can actually bring to the actual, actual acquisition and they see that I am definitely a team player that tends to sway people to actually see, wow, this can actually work when we get small business involved. Yeah, and I would say too, it's all about being proactive and not reactive because it, I always tell people, especially that last question when we talk about the acquisition process, I look at it as a puzzle. We all have our, we're all a piece in that intricate puzzle and it can't be completed without each individual piece in its specific location. That doesn't mean we can't go helping each other and giving each other advice, but it's important that we all know our roles within that process. Yes, and again, um, using our four words of participating early and being in the process, um, if each one of us take out our time to do our jobs well early and we communicate with each other throughout the entire acquisition process, it will speed up time, it'll get um, accurate and very well written requirements, and it will, in the end, um, save money for the government as well as get all of the supplies and services to the warfighter in an in a expedient manner. And we know that in the end, that's what it all was really about. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Based on what I'm hearing you say, though, I, it still goes back to my mind, the common theme that we hear in small business, that it's just difficult to get a seat at that table. Yep. You all are saying, that, yeah, we need to communicate, we need to be involved, participate early. Why do you think it is so difficult for program managers, requirement planners, contracting officers to want to involve the small business professionals early in the planning process? I really think it boils down to not knowing what value the small business professional actually can bring to the team. 
I know when I was on the program side, um, and also as a core, I had no idea who the small business professionals were within MGA, so I didn't know who to go to, who to talk to, things like that. It wasn't until I got to the small business office where I actually learned you know, what it is that they do, how they interact, and then we started making steps to improve that, um, that uh, I guess, atmosphere at MGA, coming from both, uh, we have folks that came from the contract side as well, and that way it produced a better overall uh, product for the agency and for the warfighter ultimately. I also think sometimes it's a matter of eliminating the stove piping as well, and a lot of people tend to see small business as a hindrance so sometimes it's they think that it's just a check in the box mentality or they just don't know about our office, which is something that I've found commonplace in my organization, is when I go meet with customers, they're like, oh my goodness, I had no idea you existed. And I'll elaborate to Chris's point, I'm sorry, Ian's point that once they see the value added, now phone calls are coming in. Um, we're learning, they're learning how to come to the Office of Small Business for market research assistance to alleviate the contracting officers or contract specialists from having to do that portion of the acquisition process. So it's just a matter of everyone collectively understanding, like I said before, everyone's roles and eliminating that stove piping mentality. If I could just have one alibi too, I think it all leads back to where I mentioned being proactive. Um, we've actually gone out in our agency, we've talked directly with the senior procurement executive uh, at our agency who's also the head of contracting We've inserted ourselves into their staff meetings um, when they talk about their forecasts, things like that. So that way we can get an idea of requirements that are coming down the pipeline. And instead of waiting you know, for the 2579 or the market research report, we'll go out on DSBS or we'll contact some of the folks that we you know, know are interested in doing business with NGA. And we'll take that list or that market research up to the contracting office and actually provide that to them, so that way, they're not wait, you know, they're not doing their job and then coming to us just having to sign a paper. We're actually showing them what value we can add by being proactive in that. And if I can just chime in as well, so same type of thing. I think I can echo everyone's response here, but at the end of the day, the people we service. Or they need to understand the value, they need to be educated about what we're doing, and at the end of the day, there has to be an everlasting relationship that we trust each other in the process. I need to know as a contracting officer that my small business specialists support my program's needs so, so that I can support the needs of all involved. Like I said in the beginning, it's about advocating what we do and what value we add to the table. If it, if if most of the, if the youngest or the most junior specialist doesn't understand the value there, there won't be value even if we get it done. Because the idea is to make an everlasting relationship that will continue to build. So to that same point, Reggie, my question would be, and this is to all of my uh, contracting officers, should you choose to answer. So what expertise and value do you actually see that the small business professional is providing for you? Well, i like to start on that one. We have a wealth of knowledge by our small business professionals, especially at Aberdeen, because we have um, so many large requirements that are consolidated um, for efficiencies, um, large IDIQ contracts, research and development contracts, and we really, really depend on market research so that we can adequately utilize small businesses and um, use competition in the way that it should be used. Um, as contracting officers, we all utilize programs like ESRS and EDA um, and other areas where, you know, subcontracting plans are read and or reviewed. So having the small business um, people there that really understand market research and that they also do it more frequently, they do it on a daily basis. So I think their expertise that they bring to us really help by showing what they find, capability statements, and their being our um, face with industry. Okay. And when I took the small business job um, about seven months ago, to be perfectly honest, I didn't know all the intricate details, all the intricacies within the small business programs. So I know for a fact the contracting folks that I work amongst don't either. 
So now that I'm into the weeds with it, um, it's, it's a lot easier to share those common practices because I was just sitting with them. Um, so I think it's very important not only outreach with industry, but outreach with our contracting folks as well as our program managers. And I mean, even just drive-bys. I think sh still showing your face, we sit on two different floors. Mm -hmm. You know, there is a distinct line between contracting and small business um, program offices, but we can still blend a little bit um, where it makes sense. And I think the contracting officers and contract specialists appreciate that. My director, Karen, and I both have a contracting background, so, but we can't be hypocrites too, because I know I've made mistakes, um, not mistakes. <laughs> I've made, <laughs> <laughs> there was room for improvement <laughs> <laughs> on certain actions that I've taken, so, and it could have been better if I had engaged with the small business folks earlier. Um, 99.9% .9 of the time, it's always better to get everyone involved as early as possible. I do agree with that. But let's be honest, it doesn't happen as much as we want it to. I mean, that's why we're here. So, oh, thank you. Thank you. But, but, but you asked what can they do to help? Uh, like, just to echo what Elizabeth said, helping out with the market research, a huge benefit, especially in an operational contracting office that value speed sometimes over quality. Uh, sometimes that just is, that's how it is. Um, helping out in source selections, helping out in just putting ideas in that specialist's head that they don't otherwise think of because they are busy and because they're hearing a contracting officer kind of yell at them about getting something signed or getting something done. So the drive-by thing, I love it personally. I love it when our small business folk, folks come around and kind of stick their head in my office and say, hey, what's going on? What can I help you with or whatever? So we really try to engage, and, and I like to, I, I keep going back to it, harp on the relationship piece, because if I know I can trust Elizabeth, I can call her and say, what do you think? And she can kind of guide me where I need to go. So we really try to be helpful in that. Building synergy. Synergy, very good. So what I'm hearing is the value that a small business professional brings is up to the small business professional. Are they building those relationships? Are they getting out from behind the desk and letting you know that they're out there? Are they offering to help you with the market research? Are they offering to help with developing those solicitations and getting training done to the workforce contracting workforce that helps folks understand what they do? Novel idea. Mm -hmm. I mean, well, I'll, take it a, I'll take it a step <laughs> further. It's actually kind of funny. Sometimes I will actually, the, the people that I support, we actually do brainstorming sessions and we'll sit there and converse about, okay, let's do the good cop, bad cop against the program office. I'll be the bad cop <laughs> this time and be the good cop. Or we'll try to figure out, okay, let's try to get leadership buy-in on something. Okay, you go talk to my contracting officer, Liz, and you tell me or give them ideas. So it's trying to build that team synergy to see what we can do to kind of get the bigger end result. So it's, it's, it's fun when I can, you know, pick on people and be like, hey, let, what's our game plan? Let's brainstorm. <laughs> so that's been helpful. So hopefully it can kind of translate around DOD. If you so, want tips, let me know. <laughs> <laughs> so that sets way to my next question, and that is you um, present the concept of playing good cop, bad cop, but we all know that it's a team effort. Mm -hmm. But when contracting, and the other, uh, the silent member, I guess, in, in the room to some extent is the program management, the customer side. That's another element but in terms of teaming up on members, how do you see contracting officers and small business professionals working together to influence, say, program management? That takes time, and it started with actually building the relationship with the contract specialist and the contracting officer initially. So once you build that relationship and they're comfortable with you and they trust you, which is what I had to do was build a trust, 
I had to show that I was a subject matter expert in small business. And once I proved that, it was easier to navigate the program office because now it's open conversation. We'll say, okay, Liz, I have this tough customer. This is what we're going through. I need assistance, I need help, any ideas you can give. And because I also have a contracting background, that also helps as well. So being dual-hatted, in a sense, does help build those relationships and foster that trust. So once that gets cemented, it's easier to navigate the program office. And I think to build on what you were saying, um, to build on that trust, uh, for the past few years, when we come to Small Business Training Week it, as an NGA, we've actually been bringing some of our contracts folks with us, uh, both specialists and contracting officers. That way, it's not just us telling them you know, what we can bring, bringing them here, they actually get to see a large group of people all in generally the same business and what that value added really is and what it can bring. And I think that really helps to build on the trust and what it's done for us is we've actually now started talking directly with the program offices as well. It's not just going to the contracts office and trying to help them with their contract strategy and whatnot. We'll actually go into the program office, look at their act strategy, look at where, you know, maybe some points of improvement, things like that. So it, again, it's all about communicating and not just, you know, looking at your outlook and trying to clear your inbox, but actually getting up and going to see people. Okay. Now, I know that some of you, and you mentioned uh, being dual-headed, having been in contracting, and you're now in small business, mm -hmm. some of you have had an opportunity to rotate through as a contracting person through the small business office. Describe what that experience has been for you, and you know who you are. Well, I'll go first. <laughs> <laughs> um, as a contracting officer, um, we know the rigors and the, the stress that comes along with the job. I currently am doing a six month rotation at the small business office and our organization at ACC promotes that. But when I was selected to go, I'm sure any of you contracting officers would probably feel the same way and not say it out loud, but I was like, whoa, I'm gonna go get to do some 25, 79s, and I'm going on a hiatus for six months from contracting and just learn small business. Well, that was changed the first day I got there. The first day I got there, I was immersed in realizing the documents that we send from the contracting office. They, they contain subjectivity. They contain bias statements. They contain unsubstantiated hmm. things. <laughs> so those type of things does and really do negatively impact um, small business utilization. So by having the opportunity of working on the acquisition and procurement side, I know how a market research report is supposed to look. I know how we're supposed to do acquisition strategies. So we need to be able to send those things over and know that someone else that's reading them that's not in the same realm of what we do can understand it. So that has allowed me to really, really appreciate what you do as small business specialists and be able to take that back to my organization and relay that to the individuals that work there, the specialists and the other team leads and, and everyone in our area. I think my eyes are finally dilating so I can <laughs> see some of the folks. Um, no, again, I, I, I think it's, it's unique. I, I thought the same thing. I mean, mm -hmm. the contracting officer thing was getting pretty stressful because we didn't, we were, we're suffering from a critical manning issue right now. Um, but the requirements just keep flooding in and we got to keep our obligation rates up for whatever reason. So um, not just doing good contracting, but we're going down a different path. Um, so I, it's, it is unique. And I thought I was just going to go and do some 2579s. I was going to get my training done, get all my CLPs and take a little bit of a breather. And then uh, I joined the team that's also only fully staffed at five people, um, two of us that deal directly with contracting. And we see, you know, every 2579 that comes through 
um, estimated 10,000 and above, I mean, that's an insane amount of requirements. And so we have a bandwidth issue now. Where do we insert ourselves um, with, with contracting? Because sometimes it's late. So we do have to pick our battles too. We have to be honest with each other. Mm -hmm. can't, can't be involved in every single requirement. It's just not possible. So that's a candid you know, response. But um, I think just knowing that and being honest and candid with everyone, contracting, program offices, and just getting to that common ground, look, there's room for improvement. So let's just face it, um, and let's have some lessons learned, and let's just let's keep it moving. Let's, let's, let's come together and, and do better contracting. So now having done the rotational, um, having had the opportunity to do that, is this something you would recommend to your colleagues to do as well? Absolutely. I mean, the, this, this has been awesome. I mean, honestly, I don't even know if I'm going to go back. So. <laughs> no, I mean, <laughs> the whole outreach, meeting with industry, um, I mean, they've changed my mindset. I, I would never want to be a CEO. Um, I mean, the, the, what the companies go through is insane, but, but just meeting with the folks and hearing what they have to say, there's so much room for improvement for the entire government process. So, and I think just engaging with industry, you know, it's, it's, I always have the red flags. I'm thinking like a contracting officer, I feel like I'm showing a favoritism here or bad perception because I'm not trying to help this one small business. I'm trying to help the small businesses, the community itself. So it's a little bit of a culture change even for myself. But no, I've really appreciated this, this um, new position. I, I think it's great. So I would absolutely recommend, if not a six month rotation, it's not enough time. You, there's so much to learn. Um, you know, at least a year. Wow. And you, ma'am? I feel the same way. I would definitely recommend that any and all contracting um, personnel, you know, utilize this. So maybe, maybe this could be our whole CLPs for the entire year, whoever does that. Um, <laughs> but um, it is a very, very diverse group of individuals because Working in the office, you realize that small business community is formed from contract specialists. It's formed with program managers. It's formed with people in the policy arena. And all of those people come together and make this happen for small businesses in the community. So I think everyone should have the opportunity, if they afforded it, Can to I, um, come. So one thing that we've been doing in our office, if we're not able to have rotations, we sometimes invite the contracting specialists and the contracting officers to outreach events. Mm -hmm. Sometimes we have one-on-one -on -one vendor meetings with industry, and sometimes we invite those KOs and CSs to sit in on those meetings because once they get the practical view of what we do and they actually see the impact that we make on the small businesses, it makes a difference. Mm -hmm. I've had a couple of contracting officers sit with me in many outreach events and vendor meetings, and they're like, wow, I didn't realize that this is what you all have to go through or to help these small businesses. Now, if it changes the perception that instead of going to a large, they might want to seek out small businesses, I feel like I've gotten a win in that situation. Even though if we don't have rotations, if I bring them along, it helps change the perception. So to that end, another question that I have that's related is, are there things being done in your organizations, and you alluded to making sure that you invite Mm -hmm. the uh, contracting folks along for outreach events, mm -hmm. but are there other things that you're doing in your organizations that are helping to better foster improved working relationships between contracting personnel, program management personnel, and the staff and folks of the offices of small business for your organizations? What are some of the things that you're doing? At WHS, we have been instituting this early involvement in acquisition planning. Um, it's been kind of slow, however, our office, we work together with my director and my counterpart and myself, and we decided to draft a process improvement plan. And this process improvement plan, we've identified key areas where small business is being left out. And hopefully our deputy director of our organization will approve this process improvement plan that we can implement agency-wide because what we're seeing is, is either the program office has no idea about small business, they don't see the added value that we bring, and if we close those gaps, hopefully we can get to the end game a lot sooner with these requirements. So we'll see how this early involvement and process improvement goes. 
Also, if I can just chime in, uh, since we're talking about WHS, uh, one thing, another thing we do is we've appointed a liaison from our acquisition director office directly to the Office of Small Business Programs. That happens to be me. But, um, <laughs> but the good thing is that we, sometimes it's better to have a conversation in a smaller setting so we can get to the root causes so we can actually try to work on it. That's been good, but it can also be better. Ops tempo drives pretty much everything. When, when your customer is at the highest levels of the largest organization in the world, it's sometimes difficult to forge that type of relationship on the front end. But that being said, uh, something else we do is uh, we have uh, the, the Office of Small Business Programs has access to see every requirement, whether it's uh, a part of the program or not, so that they can, so we can track if our specialists are involved early as managers. So uh, that's working pretty good on some levels, but our organizational structure, and again, the ops tempo really makes it a little difficult. But those are things that I think if we identify them and we know they're there, we can address them properly in the right setting. And I think we're in the right direction, but what Elizabeth says is spot on. That's, it's, it's really good. It's, it's getting a lot better. It's an evolving thing. But, it's been and a that's lot what of training. <laughs> yeah, a lot of training. They do a lot of training from the forms to the market research to anything else that they can help us with. So it's, it's not because of a lack of information. I think it goes back to what I said earlier about being proactive too, whether it's inviting um, contracting to come here. We're talking about inviting some of the program folks to come next year. Um, and I'll give Ms. Sherry a plug, but I've actually asked people to go to your small business courses at DAU to actually g get an idea of what it is and when we need to be involved in the process to actually help rather than hinder, you know, you get the procurement out to RFP stage and eventually award. It's not just to go get one of Ms. Sherry's famous cupcake pins. Um, <laughs> but uh, again, it, it, it's just talking to these folks. We go to their staff meetings. Um, uh, our small business office director, she goes and meets with the senior procurement executive. I think it's bi-weekly now to just kind of you know, it's a one-on-one -on -one chat of, you know, hey, what's going on? You know, is there anything that you need from us that we're not doing now that maybe we just don't see? Because at any given time, you know, there's just so many requirements. Going back to what Chris said. <laughs> okay. <laughs> um, going back to what Chris said, it's impossible to see everything. And, you know, by having these open lines of communication, it really helps us to uncover those things that we may have missed while we're focusing on, you know, say, a billion dollar program or requirement at one given time. I think it's also a, a culture issue, and I'm sure it's amongst all um, agencies, but earning that respect and credibility um, is key. So I think, you know, going into situations, people will be more receptive. If you're coming in motivated, positive, passionate, and no one should be looking for inspiration, I mean, Everyone knows the end user is the, the war fighter. So if you're not inspired by that, then you shouldn't be in the DOD. But I think it's important to strive um, to be part of the acquisition team as a starter, not as a bench player. Um, and then once you actually achieve that, strive to be an all-star. Strive to be that, that LeBron James or fill in the blank. Um, and, and you know success will come with that. And I think um, you can achieve a win-win with that type of mindset. Very good. If I could ask one question too, how many people in here are veterans? Just raise your hand. So if that doesn't motivate. That's true. You know, myself being a veteran as well, if that doesn't motivate everybody to want to come in excited about their job because all of us were in some way affected by what we're doing at our own particular agencies and groups, it. It really should, it, you're probably in the wrong business if it doesn't motivate you, I'll just leave it at that. And speaking of being motivated, first let's give our panel a hand. <laughs> so in the beginning I said to you, this is a little different from your other panels. I think they have shared wonderful things with us about things that are going on that we can do that can make it work. 
So we'd like to hear from you. Not just us, we. Collectively, as our small business community, what are your best practices? What are you doing that's helping to build and foster those more positive working relationships? Now's your opportunity to share. Please go to the mics. Thank you, Mankey. <laughs> uh, so most of you might not know me, but you recognize me because this is my way of approaching how to do work, any work, from when I was a logician, when I was a contracting officer, now as the SVP, is to be a contagion. Okay? I want people to want to know what is it I'm on? What does I do? That, or, you know, what kind of medicine am I on every day that comes up like this? Because I will tell you, and many of you have asked me that, so I was working, is I love what I do. And I'm very fortunate. I tell folks, I don't have to worry about when I wake up in the morning that I dread to go to work. Okay? So that is how I get into, you can do that too. You can be a small business specialist. You can be a small business specialist. And you can get on my team too. So I want to be contagious. I want people to come in, even if I'm not with them, I want them to actually have a question. What does it make Mankey that way? Let me talk to her. Let me ask what they do. So that is my approach. And it seems to work very well. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, Mankey. Now, I happen to know that of my panel, uh, some of them have colleagues and co-workers in the audience that if you don't step up, I have given them full permission and authority <laughs> to call you out. So please, don't put us in that position. <laughs> we have Ms. Armstrong. <laughs> Not on. <laughs> Hello, Ms. Freeman, how are you? I'm fine, Ms. Armstrong. Yes, and Ms. Freeman supports our small business program at Aberdeen Proving Ground. She was just with us a couple of months ago and she did small business participation training for um, the small business staff and the contracting staff, so thank you for that, ma'am. What we do at Aberdeen Proving Ground, because um, we support a contracting office, ACC APG, that have roughly 900 personnel. They're, di they're in roughly 12 different locations. And so we're a small business office of roughly, on my TDA, I have seven individuals. Um, so one of the best practices that we do at CECOM slash Aberdeen Proving Ground is we do rotational assignments. And those rotational assignments allow us in the contracting office, I mean, in the small business office, to get to, to those things that's not our technical work, not necessarily reviewing our acquisition strategies and our act plans, but to help us out with um, outreach, to help us improve our, um, our website and things like that. And so Ms. Ramona Kelly here on the panel, because she's a contracting office, officer and came out of the contracting um, program, the 1102s, the KOs and the contract specialists, when they come in the office, they do learn the technical side. It's the non-1102 um, 1102 workforce that I'll assign to do the outreach or support us in special projects. So Ms. Kelly um, has a, an, a, a delegation of approval from Mr. Marks at the DA level to be able to not only learn our side of gathering data, the act strategies, the act plan, but she can also sign the 2579s, work hand in hand with the PCRs from our vantage point. So that's what we do at APG to kind of help us with the workload um, that we manage. So people like Ramona, and I will say we have a history. Once they come to the small business office, they do not want to go back. <laughs> so that's, that's what we do. So 
sorry about that. Um, at my previous agency, which was the Huntsville Center, one of the things that I did is I personally walked into the contracting office on a daily basis and asked them each contract, is there something I could help you with? In other words, I totally agree with the gentleman about being proactive. Is there something I can help you with market research? If there's something, so I want them to make sure that they're aware that I'm there for them. So I don't just look at the contract, and I also went through the PMs as well and approached the PMs to help them with uh, any type of market research or any type of assistance that they needed from the small business office. So I totally agree about being proactive and reaching out because sometimes they don't even know you're there unless you do make the effort and reach out to them. Thank you. <laughs> Hello. Hi, my name is Monica Harui. I'm from Defense Security Service. And I just want to, I don't actually have a best practice, but more of a suggestion slash request. I am a contracting officer there. And I have to say, I didn't know what, I, what to expect in coming to this event. But this has really been eye-opening. And I think that as a contracts person, we don't, maybe we don't look at these events the same way and, you know, maybe not realizing how much of a benefit it could be to us. But I can say that in just this few days here, I have learned so much. I have been able, you know, to take down notes and I'm going to be bringing back so much information to my office, but I'm also a little saddened that uh, they didn't get to come and I feel like they're missing <laughs> so much here, you know, there's so much that um, as specialists or COs that they could utilize out of this conference. So, you know, maybe really promoting it to them and sharing it with them, what you guys are learning and how it's really beneficial to us both. I kind of, I don't look at us as so much as separate entities. I really look at us as, you know, a group together doing our acquisitions. And I just didn't realize how much I could utilize you guys for, how much more you you know bring than we thought on a daily basis so it's just really been eye-opening this has been a great experience and I, I hope that more contracts folks can do this thank you hi I'm Sharon Morrow I'm with the Army Office of Small Business Programs up at headquarters but I didn't start there I started as a contract specialist and a contracting officer. And even before that, I was a warrior at the pointy end of the spear, so I know what it's like to be at the long end of a supply chain, needing the stuff that you need at the right time, at the right place, at the right time, uh, at the right price. Uh, but I'm gonna take it back to the point when I was uh, doing small business at a, an operational contracting office. At first, I had to invite myself to the table. You have to be bold. Sit down with your director, your commander, give them a mission brief, convey that this is their program, not my program. And I took advantage of the time when my director just got his evaluation, his performance evaluation, and he didn't meet his small business goals. <laughs> so he wanted to hear what I had to say. <clears throat> but I invited myself to the staff meeting. And eventually I got to the point where when you're participating in the staff meeting, providing ideas, and they know that you know what you're talking about, that you know the contracting piece of it as well as the small business piece and the advocacy piece, the perspective that you bring from the small business to the table. Um, it came to the point where eventually they didn't want to have a meeting without me. We can't have this meeting until we bring Sharon in. So sometimes it means being bold, inviting yourself to the table initially, then providing value and being a resource for those folks and working as a team member. Okay. Jeff? <laughs> <laughs> so Jeff is a program manager from the Department of the Navy. Woohoo! So I'd like to hear what you have to say. That's surprising. I'm glad I wasn't asleep. Thank you very much, Emily. <laughs> First of all, I'm not alone. I came out here with a couple of other deputy program managers. I've got Bill, Bill Farmer, right here raising his hand. I think we have Simon Smith over here. There we go. Is Patrick still here? Patrick's walked out. He's from, there we go. So you've got both <laughs> coasts covered for Spay War. We're from PEO C4I. Patrick is from PEO EIS. And so 
what have we seen? First off, we're seeing that our sm small business office is doing a great job, and so I gotta call out Mark. He's in the office, good. I think we've got Mary here. So anyway, we get to get involved with a few engagements per year. For us, we get to take that back to the remaining program managers, ensure that we're always moving forward as a small business advocate. So thanks. <laughs> Hi, I'm Connie Rubin. I'm at Scott Air Force Base at the 763rd uh, Specialized Contracting Squadron. And something that we always encourage doing, and this year we put it into our internal procedures, was requiring uh, a multifunctional team meeting and the documentation going in the file. So on every, there was no dollar limit. We said every contract should have a multifunctional team meeting as soon as you get the requirement. You don't have to have the Form 9. You don't have to have anything done. Everybody who's going to be working on the program, let's get in a room and just see what we need to work on. And then that gives me the opportunity um, they're required to invite me, gives me the opportunity to talk about the small business so they don't go down a different path um, and, and their files have to document. We, we don't require it on 100%. If they have a small requirement, they can document their file that they chose not to do it because we buy it frequently and we know it's going small and that kind of thing. But um, either they have to have the meeting and include everybody or they have to document the file why they didn't do it. And it's worked great. Good. <laughs> Hey, so if I can add um, something real quick, too, that I'm not sure how widespread it is across, if it's across government, DOD, but I know at least for the intelligence community, all SESs now have a small business performance objective. That's a DOD. Okay, so <laughs> what we've done at our agency is we've actually gone up to the deputy director of, of our agency, who also happens to be the component acquisition executive, and we've actually inserted ourselves at his level to go ahead and brief him and let him know how small business is performing. Because now that it's gonna start affecting an SES's performance, they kinda of wanna know. So if there are things that we're having issues or problems with, you know, we have resources out there that can help us. And it's just good to get in front of them at that level as well, so they're aware of where the agency or command is performing. Yes, sir. That's actually all the time we have. <laughs> oh, <wow>. Thank you. Off if you're not if you're not up. Otherwise, it's gonna it's gonna cause feedback.